Um, so uh, today I'm going to present our work, um, Intent Contrastive Learning for Sequential Recommendations, uh, which is a joint work um, from Salesforce Research and the UC San Diego, uh, our Professor Julian. So um, just a little bit of motivation of this work is that um, in recommendation, user interaction behaviors with item um, such as purchase, review, click, et cetera, they are often driven by different kind of underlying intents, which can be potentially beneficial to model a, certain, um, a more accurate user preference to item. For example, um, given two users, they purchase a series of distinct items on Amazon in the past, but because their purchasing behavior are driven by the same intent, um, which is the shopping fishing accelerator in this example. So as a result, they both purchase fishing swivel in the future. And um, existing work on sequential recommendation often directly train the model based on the user behavior sequence, assuming that um, users' inter interests, they are only depending on the historical behaviors, um, such as SASREC, train the transformer models um, with next item prediction, and CL for SASREC train with an additional sequence level contrastive learning framework to learn a better embedding representations. However, um, the user's underlying intents are ignored. And as we illustrated in the previous example, assuming the uh, user behaviors of user, uh, consuming behavior of users, they can be um, affected by other latent factors. Um, such as driven by their underlying intents. Um, so there is a need to capture those information um, to and use them effectively. Um, so this motivates us to disentangle the user's underlying intent factor and fuse them into the model to learn a more accurate user um, preference to the it items. Um, the challenge are that um, those intents are often unobservable. Um, so making it a challenge to be modeled and how to fuse those learned intent effectively into the model is also non-trivial. So in this work, we um, propose the model uh, learning framework intent contrastive learning, where we alternatively perform the intent representation learning and a contrastive learning to fuse intent into the recommendation model. Um, so in the intent representation learning uh, stage, it is done by the k-means clustering over the user sequence, uh, behavior sequence, and we consider the central point representation at the user intents. And then we fuse the learned intent into the recommendation model um, through a contrastive learning framework in which the user sequence are pulled closer to their corresponding intent representation and pull away to other intents. And as user in the batch can have the same intents. Um, um, so in order to mitigate those effects of false negative, we propose a simple strategy, uh, which uh, by just simply by not contrasting against them. So the overall training framework is, uh, um, so basically the proposed, the ICL, the framework can be seen as a Accelerate component, and apart from that, we also train the model with standard next item prediction task, um, which encodes a sequence with sequence encoder and aims at predicting the next uh, expected item for the user. And besides, we also add a sequence level um, contrastive learning, which perform the contrast between sequence, and the model is trained jointly with those. Uh, three objectives. So uh, we can just take a closer look at the sequence level contrastive learning versus the, um, the ICL framework. The key difference is that the proposed one consider the cluster feature of the user representations as um, user intents and fuse them into modeling. And because it's contrast against a sequence and its intent, latent intent, so the sequence augmentations is no, uh, no, no, not required anymore. And the learned latent intent considers a group of sequence property, um, which reflects more accurate sequence correlations. 
And we conduct experiments on four public data sets, including sparks, beauty, toys, and Yelp with four different evaluation metrics on all item set and compare with four group of recommendation models, including the BPRMF for the non-sequential models and standard sequential model that train with next item predictions such as CASR, GRU4 rec, and the SAS rec. And also the sequential model with additional SS uh, self-supervised uh, learning objectives such as BERT4 rec, S3 rec, and also the CL4 SAS rec. Uh, we also collected a, a model that trained with sequence to sequence strategy to consider latent intent factor um, DSS rec. Um, and from the table above, we can see that our proposed method can consistently outperform the existing methods on all data sets. And the average improvement compared with the best baseline ranges from 7% to 33% in terms of the heat rate and NDCG which um, demonstrate the effectiveness of the proposed training scheme. We also perform the robustness analysis on two scenarios. The first scenario is um, to test the robustness with respect of the user interaction frequency. As we know, many recommender systems, they are facing data sparsity issue in which most of the user, they have a very limited historical behavior. And to test the robustness, we split the user behavior sequence into three groups based on the sequence length. And the results are shown on the left the figure where we can see the proposed uh, uh, method can consistently perform better than the SASREC among all user groups, while um, CO4 SASREC can fail um, outperform the SASREC in Beauty and Yelp when the sequence are very short, which demonstrate that um, the sequence level contrasted learning, they would uh, require sequence long enough to provide uh, um, a complete, complete information for what, um, but our method can reduce this need by leveraging user intent information. And compare with the um, CL4 SASREC, how method can improve uh, mainly because it provides a better recommendation for those low interactive user, uh, user interactions. We also conducted the robustness test against the noise interaction in the testing phase uh, where we randomly add uh, a certain pro proportion of the negative item to the um, test sequence. And from the test figure, we can see that adding those noise data interaction uh, does can um, decrease the model performance, but our model's performance can still uh, drop lower than the CO4 SAS rec, which demonstrates the robustness of our proposed method. Yeah, in this work, we introduce these uh, three components. The, uh, the intent, the constructive learning objective, a false negative mitigation strategy, and the sequence argumentation. So to verify the usefulness of uh, each components, we performed the ablation study on four data sets, and the results are shown on the right table. Um, I will not go to the detail, but uh, in overall, uh, it demonstrates that the necessity of each component, and the one interesting finding is that with the uh, ICL objective, we can learn the model without a sequence argumentation while achieve better performance compared with the SAS rec and reduce the computation cost. And since the ICL is a model acoustic training object, a strategy, we apply to the S3 rec, which is another model, a sequential model that fills item attributes in the pre-training stage and we compare the model with uh, index G and H and observe that the model trained with the proposed uh, training framework can also achieve better performance, which uh, again demonstrate the effectiveness. Um, just a quick uh, case study on the SPAS and the Yelp. Since uh, SPAS datasets contain 2000 item category and uh, Yelp datasets provide a thousand business category. 
So we did a, a case study on these two data sets to, to demonstrate the benefits of uh, leveraging the uh, learned user intent for recommendation, um, both quantitatively and qualitatively. So the table on the left side shows the quantitative results where we compare with three sequential models, S3 REC and SAS REC and uh, CL4 uh, S REC, uh, which are two typical models without considering user intent. And uh, um, we also add a, a ICL REC A, which is a model that use item category information um, as user underlying intent. So from the table, we can see that our method learned the latent user intents without using this additional item information um, can still remain achieve better performance, which shows the benefits of the learned latent intents. And the figure on the right side also shows some sample item embeddings um, that color by their uh, item category information. Uh, we can observe that our method can train a more separable item embeddings compared with the best baseline, which um, does not aware item user in, intents. Um, so with that, I will um, conclude uh, my presentation and above QR codes, uh, the link to the paper and the codes feel free to scan it. Uh, thank uh, you, Yongjin. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's for all my presentations. Uh, I, I, I think, I, I don't know why I cannot hear from the audience now, but uh, yeah, hopefully everyone can hear my uh, presentation. Um, and uh, you, I can, if you have any question, you can ask me in the chat and I can, yeah, I can reply. If, Okay, sounds good. Sorry about the, the 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 voice issues from my side. I don't know why I when I share my screen, it sounds um oh yeah. So so to so we consider this uh, multitask training as the the amp step um, where we have in these three objective, sorry, um, we have these three objective. So these three are trained together as the estimation step, um, sorry, the maximization step. And before that, we have the clustering, which is the estimation step. And we iteratively, um, alternatively train these two step um, to make uh, the, 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 both the intent representation and uh, the model's performance um, together improve. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I think the convergency is uh, mainly under the uh, the convergency of the uh, EM framework, which I can, I think is uh, kind of, uh, I didn't provide a detail here, but it's based on the convergency of the EM, this, this uh, out, out, alternative uh, uh, converging. And uh, I think the key is uh, having the, uh, one of the non equation <laughs> kind of forgot the name, um, but uh, maybe if you check out the paper's uh, appendix, I think the proof is over, it's in the, in the paper, <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, thank you, Yongjin. So I think, say, yeah, we have to use the chat to uh, communicate. Um, 